Hello, I'm Adam Brooks Weber. This is The Merry Mystic. I'm glad you're here. I have a parable to share with you today. This is a, a version of Jesus' parable of the prodigal son. <clears throat> there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. When he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? And here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and before you I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and before you I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Damn straight, said the father who was always strictly just, and knew that assisting his prodigal son after all that sinning would be unfair. You must be cast out, son, said the father regretfully. You had a fair chance, and you blew it. Now go, never darken my doorstep again. But now the good son stepped forward and said, Father, I will take his punishment for him. Take a drop of my blood, For each penny my prodigal brother spent, then the debt will be paid, and he can come home. So the father bled the good son to death, and then welcomed the sinful son back, accounts all balanced. Here endeth the lesson. Well, of course, that's not how the parable of Jesus ends, but... That's how it seems to be interpreted in many of our churches where we teach this theory of penal substitutionary atonement. The theory that Jesus had to suffer and die in order to pay for our sins on the cross. What a strange image of God that gives. We imagine not only a violent God but a violent Bookkeeping God, like a leg-breaking loan shark in the sky. Somebody owes, somebody's got to pay. That's not how I imagine God at all. I believe that God's forgiving love is freely given. It's always springing up like water from a fountain. Sometimes through our missteps, We turn away, but the water is always there. It's always springing up. It's always waiting for us to turn back and receive it again. It's not that the fountain is shut off pending payment, pending penance. It flows on unabated. Returning might not be easy. You may have to humble yourself. You may have to change your life as the prodigal son did in Jesus' actual parable. But it's always possible. The fountain is always there, flowing freely. When we're thirsty, all we have to do is turn back to the fountain and bend and drink. I wrote a hymn called The Inn of God's Forgiveness. I'd like to share it with you. From the inn a light is streaming Like the answer to a prayer As a shining invitation To the welcome waiting there Oh, the kitchen's always open And the table's always free And the company is pleasant And there's never any fee 
At the inn there is a fountain And for washing there's a pool It has healing heat in winter And in summer soothing cool Oh, it bubbles up for drinking When you're suffering from thirst And it spends itself so freely That it can't be reimbursed Those who stand before the door there Feeling tired and insecure From within hear words of welcome That refresh and reassure Every prodigal returning Is emphatically embraced Every foolishness forgotten Every injury erased It's the inn of God's forgiveness Without payment, without price No donation, compensation Or oblation will suffice Where the kindly light is leading Let us knock upon the door Let the inn of God's forgiveness Be our home forevermore That hymn is one of eight new hymns in my book of the same title, The Inn of God's Forgiveness. But it's not a hymnal, it's a book of essays on topics of progressive Christianity, eight chapter-length essays, and each one uh, capped with a new hymn. Hey, I haven't been selling a whole lot of copies of that book. I think maybe I've sold 200 at this point. So if you buy one, you'll really move the needle. I think it would be great for group studies in a church as well. If you're interested in that, please contact me and I'll get you a, a, a bulk discount. This music is available freely on my website, adambrooksweber.com. You can download sheet music and it's uh, free to use and to make copies of. And you can also sign up there for the Merry Mystic and receive uh, Merry Mystic Missive every week. And please join the conversation. What do you think about, about penal substitutionary atonement? This theory, it's very meaningful for many Christians, the idea of being washed in the blood of the Lamb and so forth. Um, doesn't speak to me at all. But I recognize that for many Christians, it's, it's an important part of the, the understanding. Well, now, thank you for your attention today. Thank you for being here with me. It means a lot to me to know that some of you out there are opening and watching these videos. I hope we'll all meet at the fountain. Bye now.